Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome to Spirit Wisdom Wednesday. My name is Meredith. I am a certified shamanic healer, and what I love to do is help healers and nurturers heal their grief and reclaim their power so that they are then empowered to embrace their life's highest destiny. So thank you so much for joining me here. I apologize for my lateness. I was having trouble um, with my neighbors being really loud. So <laughs> thank you so much for your patience with that. And that will tie in perfectly to what Spirit wants to talk about this week, which is Aries season. Um, that's not something I typically touch too much into uh, because I I'm not an astrologer. It's not, it's something I've studied personally, but I'm not certified in it. So I was surprised um, when they said, yeah, we're going to talk about Aries season. And <laughs> so let's start off with just establishing a little bit about Aries season before we start picking our groups. So we just started Aries season uh, May 20th, and it will continue for about a month's time, I think until through April 19th. And this is actually the first sign of the astrological calendar. So if things have been feeling stagnant for you, if you feel like the year hasn't quite started yet, you are not alone, my friend. Uh, because we have Aries, the cardinal sign, leading the way with our astrological new year. Um, now, a couple things about Aries. It's a fiery energy. Um, big themes of Aries are authority, le leadership, and structure. So that is where I think the great divide between these seasons comes. So um, if you know me, I'm a Sagittarius. So I'm a, I'm a fire sign, and I love other fire times of the year. So Leo season is really fun for me. Aries season is really fun for me. But um, if your energy is very different from that, it can feel easy to get dragged through <laughs> the next month. So Spirit wanted to set up a little pick a card reading to figure out, you know, where do we need to establish authority in our lives and reclaim our power so that the Aries energy doesn't drag us through the next month. We want to be able to reclaim our power and lead our lives, right? So a nice empowering theme today. And I see a lot of people have shown up. Hello, Don. Hello, Heather. Hello, Alma. Hello, Connie. Thank you all so much for showing up and joining me here. And Janine. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a couple deep breaths here to enter into the sacred space and ground the energy. That's another thing about Aries is it's really go-getter energy. It's like action, 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 let's go. So grounding is going to be another big theme of the next month. So I'm just going to place my hands over my heart and take a deep breath in and an exhale out. Let's do that again, inhale in And exhale out. Inviting our spirit guides to come near us now in the sacred, safe place. We ask, which group holds my message? How can I take charge with Aries this season? They're encouraging us to remain open to how that message might come through. It might be a feeling, a knowing, you might see a number, or you might resonate with one of the piles here. Again, they're encouraging us to remain open to what pile that might be. So I don't know if somebody here usually picks the same number or the same color or something, but they're like, it might be different this time. <laughs> So I don't know who you are, but Spirit's already showing up for you. So for group number one, we have this beautiful carnelian point. I believe this is one of the Aries crystals. Um, and group number two, we have this really cool piece of sardonyx. That was a really neat find. And I always think that this looks like a uh, thumbprint. And then for group number three, this isn't a crystal, but it is a stone that I personally painted um, and meditated with. 
So it has a lot of energy in it. I'm sure those of you who are sensitive can tell. Okay, so we should have our groups selected. Let me move these out of the way and we will get started with group number one. You chose this carnelian tower. Let's go ahead and find out how you can take charge with Aries this season. We are using the Light Seers Tarot to get started and I have so many guidance decks out because they said they're all going to be very different. And did you notice that there? So there's all, already this message about redirection coming in like an external force redirecting where you currently are headed. It feels like there's an inv invitation to embrace that. So group number one feels like there's big changes. Okay, spirit. So for group number one, how can they take charge over the next month with Aries? You feel fo very focused, group number one. So you you probably have a really clear goal in mind, um, which they're saying is excellent for Aries season. Okay. So let's get these flipped on over. First, we have for you the Knight of Swords. And then we have the King of Swords. And then the Seven of Cups. Ooh, how interesting for you. Hmm. Let me kind of move this out of the way so we have more card room. So for group number one, okay, so they're definitely highlighting this choice that's coming up. It's like you have more options than expected and you're not sure what to do. So we really wanna make sure that the mind is clear and that the body is grounded before you decide. I am gonna get some clarity here since these usually represent people. Um, I want to know if they are different people or if those are aspects of yourself. That will give us a big clue into what area of your life this is about. Okay, could you clarify the Knight of Swords, please, Spirit? Could you clarify the Knight of Swords, please? Whoa, that was way too many cards, but we will take the top. The Tower, oh. Spicy already. Could you clarify the King of Swords? The King of Swords. Ooh, Heather brings up a great point. The Carnelian point is again in another direction. Yes. There's a lot about perception in this pile. Um, even with the, the Seven of Cups, it's like having a hard time perceiving which choice is best or much, much most appropriate. And then um, the Swords energy is all about intellect, perception, mental energy, air sign energy for sure. Hmm. So it feels like this is a pretty specific message. Yeah, we're gonna go with it. We're gonna go with it to start, remaining open to other information that might come through for you, group number one. This feels romantic. I will go ahead and throw that out. If not romantic, um, a really close one-on-one -on -one relationship theme is coming up. And these are two different um, people. So potentially two different suitors that we're talking about. The first personality we have here is the Knight of Swords and the Tower. So this is someone who might be a little hasty. They might, they have good information to deliver, but a Knight of Swords usually does so without tact or maybe in a way that rubs people the wrong way. So that might be a clue as to who this is. And there's like a pretty tr big breakdown associated with this person. 
And then this king of swords would be someone who is uh, more mature than the first person and someone who is really focused on planning the future. They probably have a great interest in um, traveling or they have traveled a lot here with this imagery. And you're like, I don't know. I don't know if either of these are suitable for me. I'm not really sure what the pros, what the cons are. You feel like a list maker kind of personality group number one. So let's get some more guidance about this. I would love clarification on <laughs> if everyone who chose group number one is facing a relationship kind of situation. Okay. How can they take charge of this situation, Spirit? For group number one, looks like they have a couple people around them. Oh, loneliness. Okay. All right. I feel like there's one more for you, and it skipped right on out of here. Balance. I bring a state of perfect harmony into my world and I do so without judgment. Okay. So. Hmm. This is, I'm, they want me to rearrange these here to better represent the situation. Okay. So. If this is you, I totally relate and I have done the same thing. So I will just let you know. I have attracted people into my life because I was lonely. And I will also let you know that that situation was incredibly karmic. <laughs> it was uh, complicated. It was messy. Um, and they're bringing up all of these profound quotations. So like um, reading or quoting famous authors might, might be a theme here. But there's, there's this um, quote I've been seeing lately that's like, the flower didn't open to attract the bee. The flower simply blossomed and then the honeybee showed up. Um, so that's a big theme here as far as who we're attracting into our lives. And then also um, there's this, Radley Valentine said something today and I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. Um, but it was something along the lines of keep in mind that you're not and this is from a business standpoint, but it totally relates to relationships. It's not that you are creating a world for your person. They are stepping into your world that already exists. And all you have to do is put it out there in a way that is clear enough so that your people can find you. So I hope that's making sense for you, group number one. This feels like a situation that you haven't told many people about. And again, you're always um, trying to see from every angle, trying to gather as much information as possible. You do feel very logical. You might have a tendency to attract logical people. Uh, people who on the outside might come off as cold, but are funny and smart and witty. But um, there is a chaotic energy here with the tower. So it feels like Spirit's asking you to allow your your energy to regain balance from this big tower moment. This feels like it might actually have been yours. So you might have suffered a loss recently. And it feels like we need to balance, like regain our footing before we discern what to do next or who to pick next. They're like, wait a second, let's balance ourselves first. So since this is a relationship reading for group number one, I am going to get out the animal spirit deck. This is great for relationships. So spirit, how else can they take power or take charge? Oh, you might need to reclaim your power. Um, it says those slip ups are usually little messages. How can group one take charge of this situation spirit? What do they need to know about these relationships for Aries season? Hmm. It feels like I'm getting this stubborn kind of energy. So you might, I feel like you attract people who are quite stubborn. 
it feels like there might be a subconscious um, vibration that you're putting out there. That's like you might feel more comfortable when your partner is more of a leader than you are. So your personality might uh, generally be more loose and free. So you might want that structure. You might not mind if someone's bossy, in other words. Okay, so we have the turtle. Okay. Making room. We have the camel. Mm, okay. And then we also have the shark, my friend. Let's put him over here. Let's address that first. I can already hear alarm bells ringing off for somebody. The biggest message of this card that I love so much is that the shark only becomes a problem when it's not acknowledged. So the shark is not problematic at all. It's just, if it's not acknowledged, that's when it becomes a problematic or dangerous escalated situation. So you might be feeling like, you're going in circles or this impending feeling of like something's going to happen. There's some kind of conversation that needs to happen. That's the shark energy at play that you are picking up on intuitively. Um, and with the turtle, it feels like, so they're bringing up to me this uh, personality test. I can't even remember what it's called, but the results are animals. Um, and the turtle is one that falls on the middle axes between introverted and extroverted. So if you tend to identify with an extreme, like extremely extroverted or extremely introverted, I feel like, um, again, because it's right on top of balance, spirit is asking you to balance, to balance. And then also there's a message in here about the long haul. That feels very important. So... This is specific, but I will put it out there. If someone is making you feel like this needs to be casual or short term or no big deal, no, that, that does not feel like it is honoring what you're worth. And it might actually be clouding your judgment at this time. Like, well, I guess I could, I guess I could accept that. Well, I'm not sure what I want. So it's really important, really important, especially with airy season to get crystal clear on what you want regardless if this person even existed or was in your plane of awareness. I'm sorry if you can hear that. My cat is like falling down off of a chair in the background. <laughs> okay, um, let's get some final guidance here for you, group number one. It almost feels like maybe, maybe the timing isn't quite right. Sweet pea, please get down. My gosh, I'm sorry, my kitty cat. There's also a message about self-discipline here with group number one. So it feels like maybe, and that could help you make a decision actually. So if you're in this position where one party is kind of pressuring you or assuming that there's a relationship happening or a future going on, you could be like, um, actually, um, I need some time to deal with this. So, yeah, I'm going to need some time by myself. Observe their reaction to that. If someone really cares about you, they are not going to mind. They're not going to mind at all. If somebody just wants a certain experience out of you, though, they, they might give you a hard time. So it's not like a game or anything. You know, of course, don't just say something if you don't mean it. But it is worth it to observe reaction, re reactionary behavior. I do believe that. Okay. Sweet pea is down. Oh, you got three cards here. I didn't realize that. All right. Group number one, let's round it out for you. We've got shield maiden make plans and focus. Oh, love that for you. What an Aries moment. We also have autumn release the old and rest. Yeah. I feel like that's really going to help you get clear on what you actually want. And you might be feeling like, I know what I want. I wouldn't do something that I don't want. If that's you, 
Spirit's inviting you to do a little bit of shadow work, okay? Because there's something that feels a little misaligned here. And it feels like um, the whole focus of this reading for you is honoring yourself in relationships. And not just like asking another person to show you honor or respect you, but expecting that in return. And if you don't get it, bye, you know, peace out. Shaman, trust in higher forces. You might need a clearing. Yep, look at that, pointing right there. Yeah, you might need a clearing. So there could be a soul contract that is causing these uh, patterns. If you tend to attract the same person, if you've had repetitive behaviors in relationships that aren't favorable for you, uh, we might be able to, uh, or, you know, it's up to you. But if we did do a clearing of some sort, we could definitely address any soul contracts that came up, helping you release that. Um, definitely, though, plan out what you want. And if you are too tired to make a plan, then girl, take a break and rest. That is the main message for you this airy season. Um, and there's, I don't want to say warning, but there is a caution against pushing through exhaustion. Okay. Because Aries is really powerful. Um, if you're a Sag like me or you're a fire sign like me, you probably love Aries, but if you don't know exactly what you want or where you want to go, you're just going to end up somewhere because <laughs> Aries moves forward no matter what. Okay. So those were your messages. If you chose a group number one with the carnelian point, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Okay. For those of you who chose group number two with the sardonyx crystal, Let's go ahead and get your messages for Aries season. How to take charge. Okay, we're going to start off with tarot. And then depending on the direction that I'm feeling pulled in, uh, that will kind of tailor what type of guidance that we get for you. So for group number two, for group number two spirit, how can they take charge this Aries season? Okay, we'll go with those. We have for you Six of Cups. Ooh, Seven of Swords. Mm, we're going to figure this out. What's going on here? And the Ace of Pentacles. Okay. I feel like for you, group number two, this is about emotional health and identity coming through really, really clearly. So this is probably something that you are aware of or have worked on before because it just like went, bam, that's the theme. That's the theme for this one. So with these two cards being next to each other, the Six of Cups is um, a reference to childhood memories, childhood friends, good times. And then the Seven of Swords implies that something is not fair or being taken. So I feel like with your experience, group number two, you might have felt like your childhood was taken from you or you were not allowed to experience elements of your childhood that were really important to you. So it feels like as an adult, you are taking charge of that situation and like reparenting yourself. Um, you might be working through some of those childhood wounds that you've carried into adulthood. And then that those themes might have been reflected to you financially. So this is really specific. You will know if this is for you. This could even have to do with um, not having enough security as a child. Maybe there were times where you weren't sure if you had enough to eat. Um, if, or if you were going to make rent, or if you were going to be able to stay in your house, pretty serious things like that. If that's not you, it could simply, the childhood trouble could reflect in your ability to attract and maintain abundance. There's the saying, um, I think I've heard my mom say it before, that money can run through your fingers like water. And they're showing that to me here now. But instead, we have roots coming through the fingers. So a way for you to reclaim your power and heal this, you will see results in your bank account. 
is what they're saying. When you heal your inner child, it just makes the most incredible ripples um, that are, it just, it might not even make sense. It might not even make sense how the two are being put together. But if there are self-limiting beliefs like, I can't accept that kind of money. I'm not worth making that much money. Or you might just feel uncomfortable with money on a certain level, working with it on an energetic level. So it could be the moment you get money, it like slips through your fingers or you might save it all and freeze. Like you might have for real, like a fight, flight or freeze moment when you have money. Um, and that could be a generational healing that needs to take place. Okay. So that is the, the big, this is a big one um, for Aries season. They're just bringing it all up. Now they want me to go ahead and grab the moon. Uh, moon oracle moon nope just kidding moonology oracle cards okay let's get it right so um uh, the cycle of the moon might be really important for you i know we're coming up on a fourth quarter or balsamic moon so you might need to rest with that cycle okay what does group number two need to know spirit about aries season with taking charge of inner child healing. Oh, that feels good. Oh, and there we go. So we have for you full moon in Taurus. Your dreams need a practical plan. Okay. And new moon in Capricorn. Your hard work is paying off. There might also be a belief here. Um, you might not have even realized this I'm hearing from childhood that ties your worth to the amount of work you are able to produce for somebody. Okay. Does that make sense? So it's an energy of like the harder I work, the more worthy I am. Um, the better job I do, the more I deserve love and praise when really you deserve love and praise because you just exist. Because you're here. That's why you are worthy of love. That's why you're worthy of a good life. That's why you're worthy of comfort and strong foundations. So for you, group number two, it feels like between these two earth signs, you might be an earth sign or have really strong earth placements in your chart. It feels like there was not enough, mm, hold on, they're saying, no, no, be careful of how you say this. So it feels like words are really important for you, group number two. So you might be um, like a verbal affirmation, like what what is that called? With love languages, do you know what I'm talking about? Or like um, words of affirmation, oh my gosh, that's what it is. <laughs> Or you might be a words of affirmation kind of person. It might be really important to you to hear somebody say, I love you. So it might be that you didn't hear that very much as a child. And with this, um, it feels like the child moments of childhood were taken or not enough stability in the childhood was there for you to be a child. It feels like in your adult life, you've your biggest mission was to create stability for yourself because it does not feel like that was given to you. Okay, and spirit is seeing that and reassuring you that that karma that you've built is coming back to you. All that time and effort and energy you've put into creating your own stable foundation is coming back to you. Okay, let's get some more guidance. Let's see what lesson is being released here with Aries season for group number two. We have surrender. I can release my need to control. Yeah, I mean, just from a compassionate standpoint, it's understandable. You know, if this was part of your story, that it would feel more comfortable to try to control as much as possible because it's like, I'm going to do everything I can to ensure that I'm safe and that I have health insurance, that I have food on the table, you know, that I can pay my bills. And 
change. I understand that nothing can grow or evolve without movement. Yeah, I have found that um, this type of background can also leave you with a really, really strong fight, flight, or freeze reaction left in the body. So it's not a problem. It's not anything bad. But when change comes around, you might immediately clench your jaw and go, oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I don't know how comfortable I am with this. And there's this pattern of resistance um, because there might have been times in your childhood where you didn't know what was coming next um, in a scary, scary way. So spirit is letting you know that if you surrender to this next change, it's a good one. Okay. It is a good one. And I feel like that's why they're bringing up this comforting energy with the six of cups over here. Let's see. Oh, they want to do, um, spirit animals for you too. Okay. All right, so continuing with group number two with the inner child healing in Aries. Um, it's funny that um, inner child is coming up with Aries because I feel like Aries is like not afraid to tell it how it is. You know what I mean? So it's not like a really nurturing, gentle energy like cancer. It's like, let's go. So I feel like you've been working on this for a while and you're like, I'm ready to heal this and be done. <laughs> That's what it feels like. You're like, I'm willing to do the shadow work if it means that I'm going to be done. Okay, so we have Tiger. And Zebra. Okay. There's also an element of being seen here. And also embracing the gray area of your life. So since both of these animals have stripes, that's really important. The yin and the yang energy, the black and the white. So it feels like the main energy here is it's not all black and white. It doesn't have to all be black and white. So it might feel like with Capricorn, there can be this really intense drive to do a good job and have a successful career no matter what, no matter what, or to identify with your work and your career. And spirits like it's not, it's not that simple, man. You know, it's not black and white like that. You're not black and white like that. You know, um, you're a complex, beautiful soul who needs time to incorporate this healing. And there's also with the zebra, um, an element of allowing yourself to be seen for who you are, not for what you produce or what you do or how hard you work, but just being seen because you're here and because you're beautiful. I feel like, um, especially with Taurus here and the zebra and tiger, I feel like you would have a really great eye for design um, and arranging things in a really beautiful way. And also, if you'll notice, both of these animals have the third eye lit up. So I feel like a lot of third eye healing is help is happening with you and helping to integrate the inner child healing. I'm also getting lapis lazuli uh, for group number two. So that might be a helpful crystal to have with you, even place on the third eye as you meditate. Um, so let's get some final guidance from your angels and ancestors here. And I see lots of beautiful comments coming through. Um, and I will make sure to address those personally after the live. Also because I want you to feel safe to make those comments. Like I'm not just going to announce everything. You know what I mean? But also hold that sacred space that I see you in a namaste kind of way. Okay. So for final guidance for group number two. We have the arrow. Surround yourself with protective energy. Yeah, it feels like the inner child. <clears throat> I really feel like there is a fragment of the inner child that wants to be reintegrated. But it's like if you've ever done that meditation where you meet your inner child, you visualize yourself when you were three years old standing in front of yourself and you hug them and you tell them everything you needed to hear when you were that old. It feels like that child 
needs to be told, you are safe. You are protected. Everything is okay. That is a huge message coming through here. Okay. And then we have stargazer. Set your sights higher. Yeah, I feel like you are connected in a cosmic way. So the term starseed might resonate for you. But it just feels like, and oh, how interesting. They're really, they're zooming in here on this telescope. So you might have felt really scrutinized when you were a child. You might have had someone who was really harsh watching over you. Or you might just have felt really judged. And it feels like you're so much more expansive than that. You're so much more than what you're doing. Um, you're so much more than your job, than the chores you did around the house, than that thing you lost when you were five years old. You're so much more than that. You really, really are. And I feel like you know that logically, but it's not totally percolated. Percolate. It's not totally gone down to the emotional and spiritual level yet. And then this little guy has been sitting off to the side, but they wanted me to bring this out for group number two. So Jaguar energy is also really important for you to mulch the heavy energies that is dropped when healing. Okay. Anything else for group number two coming through here? And again, with the arrow and with aiming higher, it feels like whatever affirmation you've been saying or if you've set a goal, let's say that you've set a landmark goal, like when my business crosses this level, um, then I'll be successful, whatever it is. Or when I have this amount of money um, saved in my 401k, um, then I'll be happy. It's like with the higher messages, the universe is saying, no, bigger, no more. Raise your bar is what they're saying. <laughs> You're going to exceed that is what they're saying. Okay. All right. Those were your messages for those of you who chose group number two with the sardonyx crystal. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. So let's get started with group number three for those of you who chose the painted stone. Let's go ahead and get some messages about your Aries season, how you can take charge of your life this Aries season. So a couple things coming through already with this group. This, I feel, we haven't drawn any cards yet, but I feel like this will either have to do with work, specifically work, like an office, um, or some type of toxic energy draining situation. So let's see what spirit has to say. Let's see what comes through. That's what it feels like we're, we're getting with group number three. It feels like there's also a little bit of escapism at play here. Okay, that was too, was that too many? Let's see. Actually, are these reversed or upright? They say reversed. Okay, I don't usually do that. So let's see what's going on here. Group number three. All right, we have the eight of wands. All right, fiery energy, lots of messages coming through all at the same time. Let's look at her upright. Let's examine these upright so we can understand the meaning a little bit better. And then we'll reverse them. So Ace of Swords. Okay, and then the Six of Pentacles. So if all of these were upright, I would read this as a very positive situation energetically. Um. It seems like this Eight of Wands moment, it has become a bit too much. You might feel a little spread too thin, um, like you're being asked to do too much. And if that work situation was resonating with you, it could simply be at work. Like there's just too much on your plate. There's eight different people in your inbox. Where's this? Where's this? Sign this. Get this back to me. Where's that fax? And it is actually creating a block. Okay. With the Ace of Swords, when it is upright, this is like a big download, a big hit of truth 
where you have a huge realization like, oh, oh my gosh. Um, and it kind of changes your perception about everything. So yeah, we have, we're having a blockage here. It's almost like there's so much information coming in, you're slowing it down. You're like, listen, I can't, I can't take care of all this stuff at the same time. We're going to have to turn this off. But when this is shut down, it's like your intuitive channel is being shut down because of all of this overwhelm over here. And because of this, the ability to give and receive your energy is also imbalanced. So this would translate as either giving, 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 or taking on other problems, trying to solve things for other people without anything in return. So let's get you some, they want to actually start with the spirit animals. Give us a little more context about, ooh, okay, so they said this will be your energy and this will be the other person's energy or the situation's energy. Ooh, okay. Interesting how they create these different spreads for everybody. All right, so for group number three, Spirit, how can they take charge? Could you clarify this situation for them? It looks like a great opportunity is here, but we definitely don't want to miss it or shut it down. So what else do they need to know? Okay. So for your current energy, we have the butterfly. Beautiful. And for the opposing energy of the situation or this other person, we have the unicorn. Whoa, that was not expected. Okay, so it feels like you have done a lot of inner transformational work here with the butterfly. It feels like you're emerging out of a, an old situation and creating a new one. Because of this, your perception has changed a lot, maybe more so than you realize. Because you might, ha you might be getting, you know, each wand would represent like a different need or a different opportunity. You might be getting all of this information all at the same time. And you might be interpreting that as an overwhelming situation, as like too much, as toxic. It's actually an incredible opportunity for you. If we can control this channel a little bit more so that it, it's the, the messages and the opportunities come in at a pace that you can handle. Because they're definitely saying shutting down is not the answer. Shutting down is not the answer. It will actually um, interrupt your energetic flow and your abundance flow. So we definitely don't want to do that. It feels like a pretty, a pretty rare opportunity is coming towards you. So let's get some more information about how to open this channel back up. So I really want to unpack this for you, group number three. This feels like a career opportunity for you. So you might be getting, like, if you're an entrepreneur, you might be getting a lot of questions that you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to answer all that. I don't know how to take care of all those technical aspects right now, but it is shutting the door on your intuitive downloads and your ability to share and receive the energy that you are here to share and exchange in this lifetime. Okay, spirit. So for group number three, what do they need to know? Okay, they said three of these. Okay. Don't let pride get in your way. Full moon in Leo. You might be a Leo or have Leo placement. I guess, yeah, these will all be astro astrological signs. Adjustments are required, third quarter moon. We're just about at this, this moon here. So this is definitely happening right now for you. And then prosperity lies ahead, new moon in Taurus. Okay. Yeah, so confirming that this is definitely about career, definitely about abundance for you. Group number three. 
Ooh. Uh, okay, group number three. So with both Leo and Taurus here, these are two pretty strong personalities um, that don't like to be told or don't like to be bossed around. I guess I'll say it that way. Um, it's not that they can't handle it. They're both very, very strong people. It's just that they would prefer to either lead or make their own independent decisions. I hope that's making sense, but it feels like you're really sticking to your guns with this personality trait. Like, no, I want to do this. I want to have this career change because I want to be my own boss or I don't want to be told what to do or I want to move from this department. But it feels like that's what needs to be adjusted is that perception. It's not that that's a bad perception, but it is actually holding an opportunity at bay that would be really incredible for you. I mean, this is the way the opportunity is coming in. This is an incredible card. This does not come out very often, and it's the element of spirit, okay, where you're represented over here is the element of air in the butterfly. Okay, what else, spirit? I really want to help. <laughs> I really want to do everything I can to deliver spirit's help and advice for group number three. I really want this opportunity for you. Okay, what's being healed here for group number three in Aries season? And I mean, this the whole premise of these readings is Aries season. So we're talking one month. We're talking April 19th. We can do something about this. So that's promising. I'm also hearing um, one of my spirit guides is saying both over and over again. So it might just be as simple as you thought you had to choose between two things, like um, keeping your current job and working on your business or switching careers and saving or something. It feels like you might have been thinking, oh, I need to make a choice of what to prioritize. And one of my spirit guides is going, no, 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 both, 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 do both. <laughs> okay. Perseverance. I know that I can do whatever I set my mind to. There you go. Oh, yeah. And change again. You might have almost picked group number two. I understand that nothing can grow or evolve without movement. Yeah. So it's almost like you're really, really determined. You're very good at um, committing and digging your heels in because um, Leo is very passionate and Taurus is very dedicated. So I can tell that your heart is in the right place. You're an excellent high quality person, but it feels like there might be a little emotional element of that that can be tweaked and lightened so that you're not feeling controlled, so that you're not feeling like you have to push back really hard against something. Does that make sense? Because we don't want to uplift an element of resistance, of swimming upstream. We want to just open up the gates and let that flow. We want these to be right side up. We want you to get your downloads and we want you to have plenty of money, so much money in fact, that you freely give and receive from others because it's fun. <laughs> Okay, so let's get your final guidance for group number three from your angels and ancestors. All right, how can they take charge of this energy spirit with, with Aries season? Oh, wow. Okay, we have for you mountain, stand your ground. Oh my gosh, and warrior, what is going on? That's like undoing everything we talked about. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, it feels like this perceive that it feels like you're perceiving a predicament that isn't as serious as you're thinking it is. Um, and I can hear somebody's spirit guide talking about you in a really endearing way. Like they see both sides of it and they get stuck kind of talking to themselves like, well, I could stay or I could go or I'm not sure. Well, I know I'm right about this and I will fight for that, but 
So it feels very wishy-washy and hot and cold. And it's, yeah, that must be what all of this Ace of Wands is. This is a really specific message as well. But for those of you who actively speak to your spirit guides and receive their messages, it could simply be, because I had to ask mine to do this, it could simply be that multiple guides talk at the same time. And you have to tell them, I can hear all of you. Can you like give me one at a time, please? And it becomes a lot less confusing. So with stand your ground, okay, through that, this is being clarified a little more. It feels like there's not a need for this group particularly, which is quite interesting. It doesn't feel like you need to take action right now. It feels like your perception is still changing. Um, and it's actually a good idea to kind of stay where you are. Um, and it's almost like protecting the progress you've made. So you definitely don't want to slip backwards by getting frustrated or spinning your wheels. But you also don't want to pick a fight that's not there and kind of waste your energy. Because again, we have this unicorn coming in here for you. So if you just stand your ground and persevere, work through this, you are going to be golden. This channel of um, knowledge, of divine knowledge is going to open up. And then all of this abundance is going to come through. And the, it really does feel like a job situation to me. That's really going to clear up for you. Okay, so those were your messages for those of you who chose group number three with the painted stone. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.